Good evening, this is Machimikos welcoming you back to World Talks, where every word matters. As the tensions between NATO and Russia seem to grow constantly and as the Western alliance exercises a nuclear conflict scenario, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has addressed the nation with uh, yet another pressing issue. Namely, North Korean troops may soon enter the Ukrainian battlefields, potentially bringing with them long-range missiles to help the Russian war effort. And to discuss the topic, we're joined by Verina Chakarova, geopolitical strategist and founder of FACE Geopolitical Consultancy. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you for accepting it. So, first of all, what would North Korean troops entering the battlefields of Ukraine mean for the course of war? We're talking about several thousands of soldiers uh, at most. So, can they change anything or can the weapons they bring with themselves change anything? Zelensky's uh, revelations about uh, North Korean troop involvement uh, raise a host of uh, strategic and operational challenges uh, both Ukraine and its Western allies are facing. The immediate impact, in my view, is twofold. It intensifies the military threat Ukraine is facing on the battlefield, while also complicating the broader geopolitical landscape in which the war is being fought. Now, you, what you, are the yes, you, you, you mean you, you mean the complicating of the political landscape? Well, we we already had North Korean missiles in in Ukraine, so that does it really change that much? It changes to some extent the broader geopolitical landscape. Let me clarify what I mean by that. First and foremost, it will have broader implications. Uh, because we saw already with the signing of the military pact between Russia and North Korea that it has far-reaching implications for both global security and geopolitics. Um, obviously, in East Asia, the pact raised serious concerns uh, for uh, South Korea, for Japan, and also for the United States. And there are also concerns that North Korea could use its new military capabilities, uh, obviously with the help of Russia, to engage in more aggressive behavior such as missile tests or provocations along, for instance, along the demilitarized zone. But it has also significant impact on Ukraine. We've been discussing this uh, since the beginning of the first allegations when it came to actually the provision to military aid uh, coming from North Korea in the form of, uh, let's say, artillery shells, munitions. Now. The involvement of North Korean troops um, and weapons in, uh, in this war is, uh, of course, uh, meant to prolong the war. And we know for a fact that Russia uh, wants a long, uh, longer war, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, of the constraints Ukraine is facing. Uh, but it could help also fill manpower gaps in the Russian military. We know for a fact that Russia is also you know, facing um, certain problems with the mobilization and uh, Putin still actually refuses to announce the next mobilization waves. So it's all several problems on the ground, but it has also a psychological effect, obviously, because if we see foreign troops actually getting involved, directly involved in the battlegrounds, uh, there will be a psychological effect for the Ukrainian forces as well. So all in all, actually, this kind of uh, let's say, new revelations signal that Russia is willing to escalate its military efforts now ahead of, uh, let's say, the next, probably the next um, huge escalation, escalation phase in this war. Uh, and um, obviously, um, Russia is willing, you know, to go all in once again, this time potentially using North Korean troops in its key offensives, especially when it comes to, you know, the Donetsk region, which is um, a focal point. And yes, that's, still that's, that's where the Russian very, war very effort is uh, concentrated these days. Uh, however, the, the question here arises whether Russians are running uh, out of uh, their own sophisticated uh, systems, military systems. That's what the Institute for the Study of War uh, was uh, pointing to, that uh, North Koreans uh, may be operating uh, some, um, uh, some, uh, some sophisticated military systems. I guess 
Uh, that's uh, the fancy uh, word for long-range missiles. Well, even if that would be the case, here I will argue that Russia goes for the numbers. It goes for the law of numbers. It needs actually quantity rather than quality, which is uh, the devastating uh, you know, element that uh, Ukraine is um, is going to need in the long run, right? It's going to be about the mobilization efforts. It's going to be about the scope and scale of Western military aid. And once again, uh, let's not forget the psychological effect. That is to show that, uh, you know, Russia is not internationally isolated. That Russia has actually loyal and um, solid uh, allies, even if uh, we talk about an ally like uh, North Korea, but uh, in this case, North Korea has been delivering the numbers. It has been delivering the ammunition. It has been delivering the artillery shells that, in fact, Ukraine also has been needing. And if we will go back to the history of the way how we here in the West were actually promising to do, you know, deliver, produce and deliver artillery, uh, munition, uh, well, we felt uh, in the speed and scope to, mm -hmm. you know, support Ukraine. So um, I wouldn't go more into the quality side, like um, one, you know, particular issue here is um, obviously what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what kind of um, military aid this really is in terms of, uh, you know, the production, especially when it comes to long range weapons here. Once again, I think that, uh, you know, Russia just um, seeks uh, the effect of destruction. Um, it is still owing as right from the first day of this war, and it's uh, it wants, you know, to create facts on the ground, especially ahead of uh, the U.S. election. And obviously, while entering 2025, when Moscow is convinced that it can turn this, you know, war into, uh, you know, into a more beneficial one for the sake of its own national interests. And for that matter, right now, there is a very strong overlapping of interests between Russia and North Korea. We saw a full scale of uh, diplomatic uh, shuttles, uh, top-ranking officials in the last two years. Uh, this is uh, serious. This is not just, um, you know, about the optics. It's not just about, uh, um, let's say, you know, limited uh, cooperation. It is serious in scale, in scope, and in terms of strategic goals to uh, actually have an impact on the global order obviously because it's anti-Western oriented. So it's not just about Ukraine in this case, it's about many more actually you know, things that are on the agenda between North Korea and uh, and Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky in his um, address, I, I mentioned a few uh, minutes uh, before, referred to the ongoing negotiations um, with the West concerning, the, well, for further help for Ukraine. Now, we uh, are supposed to learn the uh, victory plan for Ukraine this Wednesday. What do you think it will consist of? Well, the victory plan of Ukraine, as we actually know, especially Eastern Europeans know exactly what uh, at the core of this victory plan lies, namely the restoration of the Ukrainian borders for uh, 1991. Those were the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine, which entail all of Ukraine from the first day of the first Russian invasion, right? So that is that is the center of uh, this victory plan. Now, there will be details when it comes to the concrete steps how to achieve this, uh, you know, ultimate goal. I think that uh, Ukraine has been the most genuine in its uh, strategic communication and its uh, uh, definition of the ultimate goal of this war, contrary to its Western partners, uh, especially you know politicians in some of the Western countries who are still struggling to you know uh, achieve this strategic consensus when it comes to the ultimate goal of, in this war. Concrete, um, uh, you know, concrete uh, points in this uh, victory plan will be centered around uh, the scope uh, and the speed of uh, military aid. Now with this um, new information about the possible involvement of international troops 
uh, in, uh, in the Ukrainian war, it looks increasingly like this war is also turning into a proxy war between two blocks, between two geopolitical blocks, where Russia has very strong partners in terms of diplomacy, uh, which is why there is not going to be one victory plan. There will be two parallel victory or peace plans, if you like, one being pushed by uh, Ukraine in coordination with its partners. And it's very much about diplomatic efforts, but also about international support for the Ukrainian efforts. But on the other hand, it's going to be about the Russian plan that is going to be boosted by countries like China and um, and Brazil ahead of the BRICS summit. So there will be a component about the military aid. There will be a component about the international support and diplomacy. There will be a concrete uh, component about the current situation on the battleground. We are, as I said, going to face the next escalation phase ahead of the US uh, election. That's absolutely clear. Um, and it's clear, um, you know, in terms of the Russian goals. Uh, so Ukraine has to certainly has to be prepared for that and has to, you know, come up with its own offensive plans. And then, of course, it's going to be about other concrete characteristics of uh, this war, like prisoners of war. We have weaponization of, um, you know, raw materials, commodities, and so on and so forth. These are also important points, but not so important as, you know, the three key points I mentioned at the beginning. So two major uh, plans are to be unveiled in the, in the nearest uh, future. Valina Chakarova, geopolitical strategist and founder of Face Geopolitical Consultancy, was our guest this evening. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation once again. Thank you. And thank you for watching. And of course, stay with us for more here on TVPWorld.com.